Good morning, guys, and welcome to NTI Day 7. <clears throat> so for today's NTI Day 7, we are going to be working on functions and slope. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to open up your cheat sheet here. So when you go to NTI Days 1 through 10 and you click on Day 7, you have a cheat sheet and you have your assignment for the day. So when you click on your cheat sheet here, it's going to give you some reminders about this unit. Because remember, this is a review, but it's been a while. So here are some reminders to help you out with this. Wait on it to load. Okay. So the first thing that your cheat sheet goes over is what makes something a function. So to see if something is a function, let's see if you can remember this, you are not allowed to have repeating x values. If the x repeats, then it is not a function. The next thing, see if any input would result in more than one output. So y squared equals x could result in multiple outputs because negative 2 squared and 2 squared both equal 4. The next thing you can check for is to see does it pass the vertical line test. So that means whenever you have something graphed, and you drag your pencil across it, does it touch it in multiple places? You'll notice that this only touches the function in one place, so therefore, yes, it is a function. However, if you had a graph like this, and you drag your pencil across it, you notice at multiple different places, you do touch the function in more than one place. And that is because your x is repeating. So since your x is repeating and this one fails the vertical line test, then it is not a function. Been a while, hasn't it? Hopefully that helps jog your memory. Alrighty. Next, let's take a look at slope. Now, we did not do this particular formula. This is not what we used. If you remember, we did stack and subtract. So you took an ordered pair, you stacked it, and you subtract it. We'll, I'll show you an example of that here in a moment. Remember, slope is also known as the rate of change. If you guys remember slope, dude, positive, puff, puff, positive, increases left to right. Negative is a nice negative. It goes down. It's easy. It's a nice slope going downward. A horizontal line is zero. This is zero fun. And undefined, remember he is falling down. So undefined would be that vertical line going down. Okay. Here we've learned that triangles on the same line have the same slope and they are considered similar triangles. They are not congruent because they are not exactly the same size. However, they are similar because their ratios are the same. Let's look over here at finding slope. So if we have a graph we take our two points, we see how many do we fall and how many do we run. Since this one is falling, it's going to be a negative slope. We fall one, two, three, and we run one, two. So our slope is negative three over two. When we have a table, that's when we want to stack and subtract. So you pick two points, two ordered pairs, it doesn't matter which one. I'm going to pick 4 and 
do our X and our Y. And I'm going to use 2 and 1.4. Stack and subtract. And remember, the first one that we write always goes at the top of our fraction because it's y over x. So we get 3.4 divided by 2. And that would give us 1.7. So stack and subtract. This one goes on top, y over x. So this goes on top, y over x. Same thing with our ordered pairs here. Stack and subtract. I recommend putting the biggest one on top. Here's my x and here's my y. Stack and subtract. Make sure that you notice that this is minus a negative. This would be negative 1, 2 minus a negative, so this would be 4. This value goes on top because it's y over x, so negative 1 fourth. Okay. Up here are our distance versus time graphs. This has a constant rate of change. It's a constant slope. It is linear, so it's moving away. Remember, this is our reference point, so this is where they started, and they're moving at a constant rate of speed. This one is moving back to home, back to the reference point at a constant rate of speed because it's a straight line. This one's not moving. If this is home, this might be school. They're at their destination and they're not moving. This one is exponential. It is not linear. So they are moving away at increasing speeds. And this one is starting to slow down because their line is starting to flatten out. All right, now that we've reviewed our cheat sheet, let's head on over and look at our questions for today. All right, number one, what is a correct conclusion about the rate of change shown in the table? Well, all we're going to need to do is stack and subtract. So here's one ordered pair. Notice this is x and this is y. And here's another ordered pair. So we're going to put our x over here and our y here. Stack. I'm putting the biggest one on top because it makes my math easier. Stack and subtract. Remember, this one will go on top, and this one will go on the bottom, because it'll be your y over your x. Number two. Ariel is emptying the water from a 10-gallon cooler. The graph shows the water level in the cooler as she empties it. Which one best describes the rate of change? Rate of change, that's our slope. So you're going to find two points. Here's one, if I can get my pen to... Here's a point, and here's a point. Figure out your rate of change, and figure out if it's positive or negative. Number three. The slope of a graph line is 2 over 5. Which of the following triangles could lie on the line? So. Remember, if it could lie on the line, it means it's a similar triangle and it has the same ratio. Here's your x, here's your y. You're going to set up your ratios and see which one of them equals two-fifths. So you'll check all of them to see which one equals two-fifths. Number four, which of the following situations does not have the same unit rate as the graph shown? So you're going to need to figure out what is your rate of change in each of these options. And then you're going to need to figure out what is your slope in the graph. 
and compare them. Which one is the same? Number five. Which of the following is true about the graph shown below? So you need to figure out, is it a function? Does it pass the vertical line tests? Is it not a function? And you have to figure out which one of these is a true statement. Is it not a function because it doesn't start at 0, 0? Is that a function or is that proportional? The graph is a function because it passes the vertical line test. So do you have to pass the vertical line test to be a function? And does this pass the vertical line test? Is it not a function because it's not linear? Do you have to be linear to be a function? And is it a function because it's a constant rate of change? Okay, so do you have to have a constant rate of change to be a function? Or is that linear? The graph below shows the distance of three runners compared to the time during a race. Which of the following is not a true statement? So this is going to be kind of our distance versus time graphs. And you got all these different runners here. So did runner B gradually increase their speed? Did runner A start in second place or did they and then finish first? Did runner C run the furthest distance? Remember, remember about distance when it comes to these. And runner C gradually increased their speed. So figure out which one of those. Use your cheat sheet. All right, so what is true about the triangles? Are they congruent or are they similar? Okay, so congruent means they're exactly the same. So let's look at these. Are these exactly the same triangles? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. They are not the same. However, they probably are similar. But are they similar because of this or this? So what it's wanting you to do is to figure out which one of these is their slope. So find the slope of this line and see which one of them matches this. All right, which of the following representations shows y is a function of s? It's just which one of these is a function? That's what it's wanting to know. Which one's a function? For f, did the x's repeat? Does this pass the vertical line test? So which one is a function? Use your cheat sheet. Which one is a function? Remember, x's cannot repeat. It needs to pass the vertical line test. All that good stuff. All right, and the graph below shows Randy's drive to school. Which of the following is a correct conclusion based on the graph? So just kind of remember what's happening here. Moving away, what happens when we flatline? Moving away, what happens when we flatline? Moving away. And figure out which one of those matches. All right, if you get stuck on a problem, please let me know. You have two submissions that you can um, complete. So if you don't do so well the first time, Make your corrections and you can submit it a second time and I'll um, I'll take the highest score. Once again, though, if you get stuck, make sure to let me know. All right. Love you guys. Miss you. I hope you're having a great day. I hope that you are safe. And if you need anything at all from me, please let me know. Love you guys. Bye.